graphite electrode. And we're gonna use it to burn subgates into this 56 Rockwell H13 mold insert. We're gonna talk about what subgates are, how they simplify the molding process, and how they affect your day-to-day -day life. Let's get started. Subgates are used to deliver molten plastic into the cavity of an injection mold that makes the products you use on a daily basis. Using this method completely eliminates an entire part of the molding process. Before we burn our subgates, first we need to burn the main cavities of our mold insert. These are the features that are going to make up our molded part when it's all said and done. For this project, we're using POCO EDM3 Graphite from Integris. Now, POCO Graphite is the graphite that I prefer to use for all my Synchro EDM work. It's some of the best in the industry. And since we don't have graphite milling capabilities, we went to our friends at Graphel to machine all these graphite electrodes. And as you can see by looking at them, they are top notch, super precise, great people to work with. So thank you to Graphel for providing all these machined electrodes for this project. Now that we're done setting up our electrodes, it's time to set up our part. Now, Jesse went ahead and roughed out the cavities and machined the runner into our insert. And roughing out the cavities is gonna decrease the amount of time it takes to finish burn this part on our sinker. And machining the runner is gonna prepare us to burn the subgates later on. So let's get set up. To hold our part, we're using a magnetic chuck from Shunk. Since the sinker EDM process doesn't exert a lot of force on our part, we can use this magnet and it's a simple and precise way to set up our workpiece. To make this part, we're using our Sodic AL40G sinker EDM. If you're new to the channel, EDM stands for Electrical Discharge Machining, a process that removes material using electricity instead of cutting force. For our main cavity burn, we're using a 5,000 spark gap. Now the spark gap is gonna be the distance between the wall of our electrode and the wall of our part. That gap is gonna be taken up with the spark, which is actually gonna erode our material. Now the orbit pattern we're using is a circular orbit. That means our electrode is going to move in a circular pattern right at the end of our program, and that's gonna finish up all the features that make up our main cavity. We just reached a million subscribers, so thank you to all of you subscribed to our channel. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you wanna see more crazy machining content and support free education, hit that subscribe button. So now that we're done burning our main cavities and our features look nice and sharp and our surface finish looks great, it's time to burn our subgates. But before we get into that, what are subgates and how do they work? Subgate is short for submarine gate. Now the way it works is molten plastic is going to travel through this center hole through a part called the sprue bushing. Then it's going to travel through these channels which are called runners and it's going to shoot the molten plastic through the subgate at high pressure and then it's going to fill this part cavity and it's going to cool. Once that happens, we'll be left with parts that look like this that are sitting inside of our mold insert. Well, typically what you would have is you would have the parts all connected to the runner and the gate all as one. But these are actually four individual parts, so essentially we need to separate the parts from the runner system.
Now it's called subgate because it tunnels underneath the parting line of our mold insert. And that's gonna create a knife edge right here so that when the parts are ejected from the cavity, they're gonna automatically shear all four of these parts from their runner system. And it's gonna put the parts in one bin and it's gonna discard the runner. And that's all gonna happen automatically. So we don't have to have a secondary process that's gonna trim our parts from our runner system. Let me show you guys a little bit more common method of gating our parts called an edge gate. So this is the exact same four set of parts, but instead of using a sub gate, we've used an edge gate. And as you can see, the difference is this is gonna come straight across into our mold cavity instead of tunneling underneath our parting line like our sub gate does. Now I've modeled up the exact same parts to show what it would look like after these are molded. And as you can see, there's nothing up here to shear our part from our runner system, which means if you molded your parts like this, you'd either have to have a person or a secondary operation that's gonna cut the parts from the runner system. The problem with that is you could have inconsistencies right here where you separate the parts from the runner. You could have a bulge or maybe some inconsistencies from part to part with that gate vestige. And if you have sub gates, it's gonna be very consistent. Every part is gonna look the same. It's gonna be nice and smooth. So you're not gonna have some of those issues associated with the edge gate. Now, sub gates only work on small parts because it's such a small hole that you can only push so much volume through it. So we're talking things like electrical housings, little parts for the electronics industry, or maybe even the medical industry, things that you don't necessarily notice in your day-to-day -day life, but this is how they're made and they definitely impact you on a day-to-day -day basis. So the biggest benefit to sub gates is they automatically remove the parts from the runner, whereas the edge gate requires a secondary process. Super happy with how this turned out. Our AL40G performed awesome, burning our main cavities and our sub gates. And as you can see, using sub gates in your mold design completely cuts out part of the process when it comes to making molded parts. And the molded parts that stuff like this make impact your life in a big way. Thank you guys for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave me a comment down below. We'll catch you next time.